Joining us right now via Skype from Washington, D.C., is Congressman Elliot Engel. Congressman, uh, thank you for taking the time out to be with us on In the District. My pleasure, Gary, as always. Uh, let's just start and, and talk about, uh, from your perspective, what is it that you bring to the campaign that should make voters say, yes, we'd like to have the incumbent reelected? Well, first, let me say that uh, I have been uh, in this office, fortunate enough to be in this office for a good many years with the support of a good many people that live in my district. I'm at the point where I'm one of the most senior members of Congress. When you're a senior member, you could uh, bring home uh, dollars and all kinds of other things to your district. And if the House flips and the Democrats become the majority party, as we think it's likely, uh, I will be the chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, which is a very uh, powerful committee. And so uh, I think there'll be good things in the new Congress. And I'll be really able to, uh, to deliver uh, better than ever before. And, you know, delivering is something that I have talked about for years and years. Um, I find it very important for elected officials to have good constituent service. We, help, we have helped thousands, tens of thousands of people through the years. And my motto has always been that no problem is too big or too small. And if someone has a personal problem or a community concern, we want to know about it, and we're going to help. And I think that we've done that, and I want to continue to do that. And again, I'll be in a better position to do that as well uh, with my seniority. Uh, right now, the climate in Washington is tense, and, and it's a split, uh, obviously, red and blue. Uh, it's, it's become very difficult for Democrats to have their say because of the uh, you know, majority of uh, the Congress uh, going uh, to the Republicans, as well as, of course, of the White House. Many people blame traditional Democrats and say, you know what, you didn't get it done in 2016, and as a result, you've left us with this, and maybe it's time for some of the uh, more experienced Democrats to go, bring in new people who can infuse the party with new energy. What's your response to that? Well, we do need new people, and we want new people, and we want young people, and we want energy. But this is not a purge or a coup. Uh, we've always been a, a party of, of, of mix. Uh, that's why we've been successful. You know, the the uh, thing when I was a little, I heard that the Republican Party was always the party of the rich people, and the Democratic Party was always the party of the working people. And that was years ago, and maybe a little bit has changed, but not a lot has changed. I think the Democrats uh, do uh, care about people, and uh, therefore, I think we've got our work cut out for us. I just had a hell of a fight on the House floor uh, uh, yelling at the uh, Republicans because they're putting forward uh, an immigration uh, rule uh, bill that was ab an absolute disgrace. Uh, they just uh, passed a farm bill that cuts back on food stamps, an absolute disgrace. And of course, this whole ridiculous thing with separating uh, children from parents at the border uh, is, a, is an absolute disgrace. It makes me ashamed. So there are a lot of us in Congress, and new people will come in. We think we'll have a good mix, and we think that we'll um, have the pulse of the American people, and we think that we'll get elected. But we've got to be relevant. We've got to talk about uh, pocketbook issues, bread and butter issues. And I think that's what we learned, all of us, from 2016. You've got to really talk about issues that, that are important to people. And all these issues that we've raised in the past are raised again. Why there's so much college debt for young students. Uh, that's a terrible thing. Uh, why it's uh, harder and harder for people to, to get into the middle class and for people in the middle class to, ri to rise harder. Uh, these are a lot of things, but we believe that the uh, ideas are in our party, and we think that our party will have the right mix of people. And I think 2016 taught us a lesson. You know, remember that Hillary Clinton did get three million more votes than Donald Trump, but still in all, uh, we have got to let people know and feel uh, that we have a good vision of the future. And I've uh, uh, been a good contributor to that, and I, I want to continue that. And, and by the way, Gary, I want to just mention that the um, Center for Effective Lawmaking uh, just rated me the number one effect, most effective Democrat in the entire country, in the entire House of Representatives. Um, I didn't uh, speak with them. They went based on record and, and effectiveness in the Congress, and they picked me number one. So I'm happy that they know it. Uh, I hope my constituents know it, and uh, I intend to keep fighting for them. Your opponents uh, talked about their familiarity with the district. One of them uh, talked about being a family member in the Bronx and said, I have really the pulse of the, of the Bronx. Uh, 
uh, and, and that uh, the congressman is um, you know, a little bit out of touch, uh, partially because he's been in Washington so long, he doesn't have a real feel for the district. Uh, do you have a, a sense of that? And of course, you were in the Bronx largely before the, di the, the district was uh, reformed, and now you, you've kind of had to deal with Westchester more than in the past. But what's your thought about being responsive to uh, the district? I'm always responsive. You know, a few years back, you may remember, I was redistricted part of my district into Rockland County. And uh, when I came there, people said, who's Elliot Engel? By the time I left there, they all knew who I was, and they were very uh, sad to see me go when the district lines changed again. So uh, I've lived in this district since I've been 12 years old. And uh, before that, I lived in an adjoining district. So I've always been in the Bronx and Westchester and uh, know the district well. When I walk up and down the streets, People recognize me. People know who I am. I have district offices in both the Bronx and Westchester, again, helping people with personal problems or community concerns. So, you know, when you want to run for office, what do you say? You say, well, the incumbent is no good, and the incumbent hasn't done this, and the incumbent hasn't done that, but you've got to make a rationale for your candidacy. I rest on my record. I've worked hard for the people in this district. I love the district. I love the people. I love my job. I love what I do. I believe that I'm effective. I believe that we've helped lots of people. And I, I, I stand on my record. I, that's the bottom line. Um, I can say whatever I want to say, but it's, it's the record that counts. And I think when you look at the record, you know, you go into my office on Johnson Avenue, uh, any given time, you'll see it loaded with constituents who are walk-ins from the street. They come up. Same thing with my district office in Mount Vernon. Same thing in Co-op City. Um, I, I, I have done that. So I'm... I'm well known, and uh, I think the people have concluded. You know I've had some tough races. I've won them all. Uh, but I always say that uh, I ask the people, it's a two-year term, to give me a contract for two years. When the two years are, is up, um, I ask them to renew my contract. And that's where I am now. I'm asking the people to renew my contract for two years based on re my record and what I've done. Talk to me about uh, what you see as the best part or parts of your legislative record? When you look back, do you say, hey, we got this done and I was behind what? What, what, what are you most proud of legislatively? Well, one of, the, one of the things I was really proud of is because I'm on the health subcommittee of the Energy and Commerce Committee was the uh, Affordable Care Act or Obamacare uh, emanated from, from our, uh, our committee. Now, I know that it's been uh, torn into shreds and the Republicans have tried every which way to try to sabotage it. But I really believe that that's uh, something uh, health care should be a right in this country, not a privilege. Uh, I am actually for Medicare uh, for all. I, I'm for a single payer uh, plan, but we didn't have the votes for that. So we passed uh, Obamacare. I'm very proud of it. Now, again, uh, when we take control uh, and we're going to still have Donald Trump as president, we're going to have to fight him on health care. But that is certainly one of the things I'm very, very proud of. I'm, I'm also proud of, obviously, the, the role I've played in terms of uh, international affairs. And, you know, we have uh, many, many people in my district from all over the country uh, coming uh, to uh, the United States, many living in the district. I just met in Washington this afternoon with a group of uh, Caribbean Americans. There are a number of uh, Caribbean Americans in my district, and uh, I've, I've worked uniquely with, with them and and with other uh, hyphenated Americans, because we're, we're all in, in America. And um, unlike the president, uh, I don't think we should divide people. I think we should welcome people. I don't think we should be afraid of immigration. I think we should embrace it. My grandparents were immigrants to this country more than 100 years ago. So immigrants have built this country. So I think when you, when you look at my record, you see a progressive record, someone who's always fought for gun control, for a woman's right to choose. You go right down the line. I got an F rating uh, from the National Rifle Association, and I got an A rating from the NAACP. So I'm, I'm very, very proud of that. I'm, I'm you know, proud of the fact that we have uh, a different uh, places and an important role in, in, in the world. And I've been a, an important part of that in my role as ranking member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, and hopefully on my role as as chair starting next year. Mm -hmm. Congressman, uh, we're essentially out of time. Uh, I know it's a very busy time in Washington. We do thank you for your time on uh, in the district. We wish you good luck in the rest of the campaign uh, and uh, good luck certainly on Election Day and uh, in Washington because there is still a lot of work to be done. Thank you very much for joining us.
and um, we'll be right back with more.